welcome friends we are starting a new course on a very important subject the manufacturing strategy you all may be knowing that government of india is focusing a lot on making india campaign government feels that manufacturing is one sector which can provide employment to large number of youth of this country now when government is looking for the strategic advantage of manufacturing we also need to see that how manufacturing can provide that strategic advantage to a organization to a company now most of the organizations are marketing driven organization we are living in an era where customer is king and manufacturing is considered to be a reactive function which is meant to fulfill the requirements as per the marketing of the organization marketing is considered to be the driving department and manufacturing is considered to be fulfilling the requirements of marketing but this subject of manufacturing strategy talks of that how manufacturing can also contribute in the strategic development of the organization and therefore we need to consider that not only manufacturing but all the functional areas of the organization can contribute in the strategic advantage or in providing some kind of uh, competitive advantage to the organization so in this very course we are going to see that how organizations particularly indian organizations can use manufacturing for their competitive advantage in this session we are going to discuss that what are the different dimensions of the manufacturing output what numbers are propelling this phenomena of make in india in favor of india because there are more than 100 years of history of manufacturing revolution and unfortunately india is nowhere in that 100 years revolution now probably there is going to come some kind of golden era where india can make a mark on the global manufacturing map and therefore from the india's point of view it becomes very very important to understand the strategic role of manufacturing now when we see that what are the different sources of wealth creation since india is always known as agrarian economy so agriculture we all know is the primary source of wealth creation there was a saying that india lives in its villages most of the indian population at the time of independence were in villages about 75% of them were living in the villages and most of them were dependent on agriculture but slowly and slowly if you see now that the sizes of our farms are reducing and most of the farmers are becoming marginal farmers so agriculture is no longer remaining a winning proposition farmers are not able to enjoy the hard work they are able to they are producing in their fields so second important source of wealth creation is manufacturing manufacturing is started as a manufacturing revolution or industrial revolution from europe and uh, from europe it went to usa and then to china and now china has become such a powerful manufacturing nation that uh, about a quarter of world's global manufacturing output is coming only from china but there are some rays of hope also and therefore we are going to discuss that how manufacturing can provide that benefit that advantage to other nations and particular to india also and then third important source of wealth creation that is services now india has particularly excelled in this field of services 
about uh, 60 percent of our GDP is coming only from the services sector. Most of the services are IT driven services where Indian talent, Indian engineers, Indian technocrats have done something exceptional and all through the globe whether you talk of Silicon Valley, whether you talk of Europe, whether you talk of Australia everywhere Indian engineers are doing progress in the field of IT. But most of these IT industries are dependent on the foreign nations, their clients are in Europe, are in America or in some other part of the world. So, whatever is happening in those countries is directly going to affect the Indian IT industry. So, therefore, to depend on our own economy, our own situation, manufacturing because India is a largely consumer driven economy, we have huge demand of almost all kinds of products and uh, presently that demand is fulfilled by the Chinese products. So, there is a good scope, sufficient scope, ample scope for fulfilling our demand by domestic production and therefore, it is very important that we develop our manufacturing setup, we develop this vibrant setup so that it not only fulfills the demand of the local consumer, it creates substitute for the imports and it also develops the local employment. So, with this idea we are going to focus on this manufacturing setup that how manufacturing can provide import substitution, then it can also provide employment and then it will also create lot of boost in economy because many of the services which are presently done for the foreign nationals will be done for local players. So, that is the basic idea of focusing on manufacturing that uh, how India's contribution of manufacturing in its GDP is somewhere between 15 to 16 percent present and we want to increase it up to 25 percent in our GDP and for that purpose we need to see that how can we leverage our manufacturing sector, how can we boost the manufacturing sector, how can we invite more FDI into manufacturing sector, how can we encourage our local businessmen to start new units within the country. So, that is the whole idea of the manufacturing strategy on one side which is from the policy point of view. But at the organizational level also, at the organizational level also there are possibilities that we use manufacturing for the advantage of organization. We have example of Walmart, where the success of Walmart is dependent on its supply chain advantage. The supply chain which Walmart has developed that is the core strength or that is the core reason for the success of Walmart. One of the most profitable company on fortune 500 is apple. The reason of apple's success is its ability to innovate. So, each company when you talk of apple, when you talk of walmart, walmart is the number one company in the fortune 500 on the basis of turnover and the success is because of supply chain. Apple is number one in the fortune 500 on this basis of profitability. The reason is their ability to innovate. Now, we want that manufacturing can also contribute in the success of some organization. So, companies like Toyota that is the best example to quote that which company has got tremendous amount of success because of its manufacturing abilities. Now, we need that type of abilities in most of our Indian companies unfortunately, that is not the case at the moment. So, therefore, it is becoming important that if we want to excel on the basis of manufacturing, we need to work at two levels. 
one at the policy level where we need to create an ecosystem so that we can promote concepts like in make in India and on the organizational level where we can take the advantage of manufacturing for getting the competitive advantage for the organization. So, that is the uh, context in which we are going to discuss this whole course. Now, what is manufacturing? So, manufacturing is basically defined in so many authors in different ways, but the simplest way to understand manufacturing is that it is a value addition process. You are doing some kind of value addition in the raw material, spare parts, components, sub assemblies, these are the inputs and then these inputs go for some kind of conversion process. This processing is the conversion process. You do some kind of fabrication, you do some kind of assembly work, all these are the physical things. So, you have raw material, you have components, you have sub assemblies, semi finished components, you do some kind of fabrication, you do some kind of assembly, etcetera, and as a result, you create manufacturing output that is the products. So, this is the value addition process as you are moving from left to right you see that you are adding value in this process and that value, value is the core of any manufacturing process. Now, if uh, you are doing processing where some of the activities are not value driven activities then that is going to create problem for your organization problem means your cost will increase, but your output value will not increase proportionately and that is what manufacturing strategy means that we need to identify that what are our value addition activities and what are our non value adding activities. And over a period of time we will try to eliminate all non value adding activities. So, it is important that what is value and what is not value that we need to understand and if we can understand that what are the values. So, again if we go into philosophy of value from our scriptures to western authors there are different concepts which can define value, but the simplest way to understand value in the context of manufacturing is that something which is going to help in improving the customer satisfaction that is value and things which are not going to help in improving the customer satisfaction these are non value. For example, for example, if uh, we are doing painting on a job, so because painting is going to increase the customer satisfaction because you are doing paint of those colors which are soothing to the customers. So, painting is a value adding activity, but if you are storing your products in between if your products are in queue waiting for the processing to happen. So, this waiting activity this movement of product from one machine to another machine these are not adding any value which are going to help which are going to increase the customer satisfaction. So, therefore, these are non value adding activities. In our discussion during this course we will again and again emphasize that we need to minimize these non value adding activities. So, unnecessary movement of goods in the shop floor, unnecessary queuing of the goods waiting for their processing and so many similar activities are non value acti activities. So, we need to see that uh, as a manufacturing engineer as a student of management or as a decision maker in the organization we need to differentiate that what are our value adding activities, what are non value adding activities and then we need to continuously focus in this uh, uh, system of uh, raw material conversion process and the product uh, that in this conversion process only value adding activities are there.
if you are having non value adding activities these are going to damage your manufacturing strategy. So, one important uh, thing which is there that value and non value and uh, continuously this debate will go on in our discussion that what are non value adding activities and uh, we need to eliminate those non value adding activities in order to have co competitive advantage from the manufacturing. Now, in the beginning of this course it is uh, I think important to discuss some of the global shifts which are affecting the manufacturing landscape and particularly I am talking in the context of India. And uh, when you see the global shifts, so we can have these three important changes which are happening in last uh, 4 and 5 years. One is deflation in factor cost, the factor cost, the input cost to the manufacturing processes are continuously decreasing. Then decline of China that is also a very important phenomena which is happening nowadays and some new manufacturing locations are also emerging. As I mentioned earlier that the decline of China and emergence of new manufacturing locations these are rays of hope that yes India can also play some important role in the global manufacturing map and let us discuss these things in some more detail. Now, as I was mentioning that the cost of input materials are continuously decreasing. So, if I see the CIA report which was presented in 14th manufacturing summit in 2015. So, it says that uh, according to US energy information administration that the cost of oil, the cost of steel and cost of copper all these things which are important inputs to the manufacturing setup are continuously decreasing. You can see all these graphs. So, these are continuously decreasing and uh, this is one big advantage to the manufacturing sector that your input cost is continuously decreasing. And uh, the other interesting fact is that, that in countries like India there is a strong consumer demand continuously because uh, of the factor which is one very important that our per capita income is continuously increasing. The size of middle class in India is continuously on the increasing trend and therefore, uh, the demand of consumer is continuously becoming strong in countries like India. And therefore, the prices of end products have not fallen though the input cost has fallen because of low prices of the raw materials, oils, energy etcetera, but the end products price have not fallen. And as a result of that if you see because of these things uh, your input cost is reducing, but output cost output price is remaining at the same level. So, your the profit margins are increasing. So, you have additional margin for the manufacturers because your inputs are reducing output is remaining at the same level. So, either you can compete on the basis of price you can reduce the price. So, you can become in a more uh, competitive category or you can reinvest the additional margin for creating more facilities or you can reinvest that additional margin for better R and D innovations. So, all these things are in favor of manufacturing because of reducing prices and strong consumer demand within the country. The second important factor is about China. As we all know the industrial revolution started from Europe and uh, then America picked up and at that time the idea was that uh, if you produce the quality products the cost is going to up and all through the globe we were following the same idea that cost and quality are inversely proportional. Then came the phenomena of Japan where they did a massive revolution in this 
thought process of American industries and Japanese used to say that cost and quality can go hand in hand. If you are producing the quality products and if you understand the meaning of quality in the right perspective, cost of the product will go down and the idea of Japanese manufacturing is basically driven from the concept of value. So, when you eliminate non value adding things obviously, your cost is going to decrease and they gave a much wider definition much wider understanding of the concept of quality. And slowly and slowly all through the globe this is started from company like Toyota and but within no time almost whole globe including country like India started following the concept of Japanese manufacturing systems. In the end of 20th century came another magic and that magic is from China. China focused only on low cost and as a result they started flooding the markets of globe with their low cost products. And uh, in 1990s China was contributing only around 3 percent of global manufacturing output and presently as I mentioned earlier also that China is contributing more than 25 percent of global manufacturing output. So, within just two decades within 20 years all these things happened and how this happened they got some cost advantage factors and the Chinese government also took it as a challenge for developing favorable infrastructure and input setup input ecosystem for large scale production facilities. And all these things favorably addressed by developing Chinese manufacturing industry and uh, now whether you travel to Japan or you travel to America or you travel to Europe everywhere you find made in China product. So, this was a kind of a magical story that is why I write it as Chinese magic. But what is happening now slowly and slowly we see this Chinese mag magic is coming down because there are some factors which are contributing to the decline of this Chinese magic. China originally started to supply labor intensive low technology products. So, most of the Chinese products were labor intensive and low technology, but slowly and slowly when the manufacturing industry and R and D activities in China started growing up they entered into very sophisticated design developed engineering products and now they are into very much high tech products also. But though you can see that China is still dominating the global manufacturing uh, map, but uh, to some extent this dominance is diluting nowadays because there are some factors which are contributing to the decline of this Chinese magic and these factors uh, this graph can help you to understand that the row growth of Chinese manufacturing the production growth is continuously decreasing since 2014 and uh, this figure is now coming to around 6.8 percent which was once upon a time was up to 10.4 percent. So, this graph indicates that uh, the decline is happening in the uh, Chinese manufacturing and uh, the factors which are contributing to the decline of uh, uh, Chinese manufacturing setup is one is inflation in Chinese wages. The China was uh, taking the advantage of low factor cost and in the low factor cost uh, the wages were very important because uh, most of the products which China was manufacturing was the labor intensive. So, the labor cost was a very important component of the Chinese products, but uh, now the Chinese uh, wages are also 
significantly increasing as compared to Europe and America. So, the advantage of low cost low wages is slowly and slowly eroding from the China. The second important thing is strengthening of yuan because uh, earlier China was not an export economy. So, the yuan's value was very low, but now China is mostly a export driven economy. So, lot of foreign exchange is coming to China and as a result when lot of dollar is flowing into China the yuan is strengthening up. So, as a result the export is becoming costlier from China. So, that is another factor which is contributing in the decline of Chinese exports. Now, cheaper energy in the west energy is one very important input to manufacturing setup and thanks to shell because of that we have a lot of natural gas available in uh, western part particularly Europe and America and uh, the advantage of that uh, low cost of energy is now going in favor of USA and part of Europe also. And then one very important change which is happening nowadays that most of the industries are going for rapid automation and cost of technology is also decreasing. So, now it is easy for other companies other countries to adopt technology. So, robots are coming IOT is coming in the manufacturing setup and this degree of automation is changing the set of uh, manufacturing from labor intensive to technology intensive and the adoption cost of technology is also decreasing. So, it is becoming easier for other competitors other countries to adopt technology in their manufacturing setup. So, that advantage of uh, adopting technology at low cost uh, is also taking the advantage of manufacturing away from China. So, these are some of the factors uh, which are uh, contributing to the decline of uh, Chinese uh, magic and uh, therefore, it is uh, possible for other countries to chip in into that uh, space which becomes uh, uh, empty because of decline of this uh, Chinese growth. Then another factor which is uh, changing the global manufacturing shift. I am taking uh, uh, three countries just to give you a brief idea. One is UK which is from Europe, another is Vietnam which is from Southeast Asian countries and third is Ethiopia which is from East Africa. The point which I am trying to make that uh, now all across the globe UK is coming very strongly as a low cost manufacturing setup. Vietnam is since last around 10 years is becoming a possible substitute for the Chinese manufacturing industry because of low wages, because of disciplined workers, because of uh, other infrastructure which is coming up very fast in Vietnam. Ethiopia that is in East Africa is another very strong manufacturing hub coming up in the African continent. Uh, it has lot of uh, advantages for the manufacturing setup uh, like 100 percent tax holidays for 10 years, uh, lot of uh, other promises uh, of supply of timber and other water resources etcetera, energy available at low cost. So, these are some of the new manufacturing destinations uh, which are almost offering the similar kind of advantage which China used to have. And uh, therefore, uh, if you consider the logistics cost as an important phenomena of distribution. So, uh, it will be in coming days possible that uh, people will start manufacturing at different locations uh, to serve the local markets. Uh, and uh, therefore, if you see the graph here uh, which is uh, a survey done by uh, CII with the help of uh, uh, BCG and in this uh, survey it was seen that uh, how different countries can pose threat uh, or the biggest competitor for Indian industries. And in this uh, 
obviously china is uh, the number one but if you see that uh, south east asian countries like thailand vietnam etc are another very important uh, promising area which can be the competitor for uh, indian uh, manufacturing companies and then you see uh, either usa or latin american countries where brazil mexico argentina etc are there these are also going to be the uh, possible manufacturing competitor for india in the coming years so it is not only the china but uh, the manufacturing will be distributed at various other locations also uh, even uh, smaller countries in our own uh, nearby like bangladesh sri lanka etc can also pose good amount of competition to the indian manufacturing setup so uh, this gives you idea that uh, lot of countries will come up uh, as a potential competitor for indian manufacturing organization but on the other side this also gives you one advantage that competition will not remain only focused to china rather it will be distributed to various other places so there will be chances for india also but we have to be proactive in taking the advantage of the shift of competition from one country to various other countries so with this uh, we conclude this session and uh, will welcome you to the next session thank you very much